Welcome back to my channel. I'm Brian Kapke, and in this video, I'm going to be taking the program that we created in lesson two, my last video, and enhancing it with certain things that were lacking in the first version of the program. After all, that was our first try at it. Not bad, but could be better. So what am I going to specifically do? First of all, I'm in VS Code like I was before. I don't know if I was showing the navigation bar on the left, but you can see these are my programs. So I'm now in a new version of the lesson two, which is lesson 02 underscore enhanced. This code will be available with anything else it's depending on in a zip file on GitHub. I'll put a link in the description and make sure you're following along because I'll also put a link in case you forgot how to do this. And that video will show you not only how to create a virtual environment, but I use Streamlit as an example, which was very convenient for this. So we're gonna continue with this game I wrote, which is admittedly very basic, but it's called NumGuess, and you gotta to try to guess a number between one and 10. Now, one of the problems we had with the first version was it actually couldn't be used to guess a number because Streamlit kept resetting all the variables in the script. Now, why did it do that, Brian? That seems kind of stupid. Well, the reason it did it is because Streamlit has a very interesting default behavior. Every time you take an action or do what it calls an event, it runs the entire script from the top to bottom. And this means you got to do a little extra coding to get around that problem. But what you can do is uh, called saving state. So I'm going to show you how to save the random number we generate to the session state. But I also want to show you something cool too, which is we can add a sidebar to the left of the screen, which is nice. We can also add some colorizing to our text. And I'm even going to show you how to display an image. So let's walk through this and I'll kind of demonstrate a few of these. So the first thing we need to learn is Streamlit has something called session state. It's actually a very simple idea. It just keeps a dictionary and has name value pairs in it. What did you call it? And what's the value? So it's a way that it can hold on to things you want to remember every time you're looping through your program. Now, the first time we run our script, it don't exist, right? There's nothing in the session state. So we have to say, hey, is this in my session state? And Stream will come back to say, yo, no, it's not there. You got to tell me something here. So what we're doing here is saying, is number in st.session underscore state? And if it is, then it will say, yes, it is. And if it is, then we can just grab it. We can say, oh, great. Take number, which is what we called it when we saved it to session state, and put it back in our variable called num. Else, meaning it ain't there, this is our first time through, so we better store our random number to it. So we're going to get a random number here from 1 to 10, and we're going to put it in num. Now, we also want to make sure, because we know this is going to keep running through, so we better make sure we stuff that into our session state. So here we say st.session underscore state. We give it our name, right, number, and we say it's equal to num. So the net effect of this block of code is it will make sure that our random number we generate is stored in our session state so that the second, third, fourth time through, it doesn't lose track of it. It doesn't just forget it. And we do that with this little block of code. Now notice that when we store our random number, we're storing it in something called number. The first time we come through, it's gonna say, no, I don't have number in my session state, and it will load it here. But if it is there, the second, third, fourth time, it should already be there. So we'll say, hey, if I have number in my session state, grab it and put it in num. All right. Now, something I didn't mention, but I'm going to cover anyway, is you may have found like the way it stacks everything as kind of not the most attractive thing to do. So one way you can control how it arranges things on the screen is to use columns. And what we do is we say, well, how many columns do we want to break this into? We're going to break it into two basic columns. So we'll say ST columns two, and it returns a reference to those two columns in order. So column one, column two. And now we have a reference we can use. We can say with call one, print the ST title in column one. With call two, our second column, we're gonna load an image. So we'll put that in. We don't know what that looks like yet. I'll show you that when we get into the program. And then we're gonna just say ST right. We wanna see blue. So we can do markdown. And by saying colon blue, it will change this to blue. And then here we can say, what do we wanna print? And it will print it. This doesn't change. We did this before. We're just going to say st text input for an input text box. And then we'll give it a prompt of enter a number from 1 to 10 and default the initial value to 1. We're converting that into an integer and putting that into txt underscore guess. And I mentioned before that I use prefixes like txt or btn to kind of give me a reference that these are not normal variables. They're references to widgets. So this is txt, meaning it's a text box, btn, meaning it's a button. So we have our start button, so btn start, and that's st 
dot button and that just says text in it is going to be start again and if the person clicks it it's going to say if button start which should regenerate our random number which it's doing it's also going to display it for us just so we can make sure our game's actually working right so not going to make it very difficult to solve it but we can remove that later but just so we know it's working and then this is really important we need to take that number and put it in the session state so the next time it comes through it can grab it again and we don't lose it then we have this make guess which is where it says hey did what you enter match the number that's currently stored in num and here it's saying if you clicked button guess this is the logic i want you to run so if txt guess is equal to num and just remember we did convert that to an integer so this will be comparing an int to an int then st write you win and it'll do this cool special effect called balloons if it doesn't match then it's going to do the else and it'll say sorry wrong number try again and we can always say show number by clicking on the button show number if you click that it will say st write the number is num we're already printing it by default above because i was debugging earlier but either way you can do that and again we have this expander thing we saw before and finally, a really cool thing. There's a lot of nifty features in Streamlit to allow you to organize your page, put things where you want it. And one of them is using a sidebar. And I'm just using this as an example. You can put menu options there. You can put pretty much whatever you want, but it creates a divider and it gives you a nice little navigator or information side or anything you want in the sidebar. So in that particular area, we're gonna say ST Markdown and then put copyright Acme Games, you know, it used to be in all the cartoons and Warner Brothers, Acme something. And we're gonna use print a message, ST Success, we'll print in green it should. There's ST Error, I think, in warning, but there's a couple of different flavors. So it's just a way to you to print a certain look when you print the message, so license validated, you know. Didn't really validate it, but who's gonna know? And then here we got ST Slider, and I'm just gonna show you like how we can create a slider control. There's a lot of stuff that you can go to on the Streamlit site, and I talked a lot about that in my first video, but there's many different types of controls. So I'm trying to introduce these to you slowly, but a slider is a, is a really cool one. Now let's get this running. I'm still in my virtual environment, so I did that whole activate thing. So I'm still sitting there. What I'll do now is I'll say Streamlit run. Right off the bat, you can see this looks a lot nicer than what we did before. A cool image here you saw all we had to do is say st image and we point to an image and it loads it so you can put it in the same folder or reference it but it's very easy to do things actually this is something you'll learn also about streamlit but things that you would think would be kind of complicated like playing a video or recording sound or doing things that are actually quite trivial but there may be things that are more difficult to do the one thing I will say when you're doing Streamlit or anything like this, it's what I call a very high level, easy to use type of service. It's not a good idea to try to fight what the service does. In other words, if it's programmed a certain way, like I don't like the way it does this sidebar. I want to change the way it does say this slider widget. You can do that, but the more you start to fight the way something works by default, the more you might as well just say, I'll write it from scratch. I'll use Django or something that's designed for that meticulous control. Streamlit does a lot and unless somebody knows the ins and outs, they'll not, they won't know how easy it was for you to do this. So have fun with it, but don't fight it. Okay, so let's look what we got here. We got one, right? We put a number here, a guess of one. Start again, make guess, show number. So let me, I thought I was printing the number. I guess I didn't, but let me say show number and we can see the number is nine. Now before, every time I click show number, it kept changing. But if I do it again, stayed. That's because I put it in state and I retrieved it again. So if I want to test this, I can say, make guess. So sorry, that's not it. Well, I know it's nine or it should still be nine. So I can just say nine, make guess, ah, balloons. So that was that cool balloon thing, ST balloons. And boom, you got these cool balloons. There's a few things that can do like that. Another one, Snowflake. I think it's because Snowflake bought them. But you got all this cool stuff here. And again, of course, the expansion thing. And here, remember, we put that color blue. So now we get blue text. I have to say, when I first used Streamlit, I was like, I'd like a little more color. I'd like a little more splash here. So with the blue here and a nice image here, you can see how we can make it look pretty slick. Over here, we've used the sidebar. So the sidebar creating this Acme Games, and this is, remember, that's the, the message we printed. Here we have a slider control. So we could have used a slider control like this for people to guess. But it seems kind of like an awkward control when you're just supposed to enter a number from 1 to 10. So I prefer the text box. But there's a lot of ways like, to do this. And it all comes down to what your preference is. 
But this is a really nice control when you're presenting visuals and Streamlit's really well designed to do any kind of analytics. Imagine you're looking at maybe filtering on number of children in a family because you're doing this cool graph. It could then adapt to whatever you're filtering on here. We can close this by clicking there and then expand it again. And I didn't show you this before, but you can do some things here like change settings, print, record, things like that. Settings will allow us to do things like run on save. You can also switch the screen by default into wide mode. I can change this into dark mode if I like, which is good, but it's not so good for video. So I'm gonna go back to light mode. So you do have some things here. And if you change programs, let me go back just so you can see this. But if I make a change, I'll do control S, You'll notice now it says rerun. If I say always rerun, it'll just always rerun it when I make a change, which is not a bad idea, but you'll need to otherwise say rerun so that it gets your changes in the script. It won't automatically update. So I hope you like that. I think this showed you how easy it is to enhance your program to make it better, but managing the state of your application is one of the more painful things to do, to be honest. I like to just have it there and store it like a regular Python script. So you gotta do a little more work, but in the end it's worth it, right? You can write really cool programs. In the book I'm reading now, I'll put a link in the description to the book so you can go look it up, but I really like it. And there's one chapter where the author talks about using Streamlit as a way to showcase your knowledge and experience. You can do all kinds of cool applications that show how you know how to train models, how to display things, how to do Python coding, all that stuff. So that's it for this time. Please like, share, subscribe, and until next time, I'm pulling for you. Thank you.